I'm sitting on the world's creakiest chair, so um, we're just <laughs> going to ignore that in the background. Um, yeah, so this started just now because I was thinking about the next video I want to shoot on here and what I want to talk about and stuff. Um, so I guess I'll jump into it, man. I told y'all that number five was going to be specific stories of abuse that I lived. Um, I don't know why it feels important to say, but like in my last video, um, same as today, I'm not wearing makeup and that for me is like really interesting and important in this series because I've often gotten very made up and try to do like a very studio setup to talk about these things. But I think it's beautiful that in the videos where it's starting to get a little bit more emotional and triggering, um, I'm, uh, this is really annoying. I'm, um, sorry. It's just I have like the instinct to hold it and stop it and I know it's not good and it's like if you want to know the specific memory that brought me to like this it's thinking about like my first really harsh spanking where my mother spanked me with a wooden spoon that she actually broke on my butt and I was um, three years old max. I literally looked like this. That was like three-year-old me. Two-year-old me probably in this picture. So I literally looked like that. And um, I, I had been left to play with a friend. So a friend had come over. This little girl from, I don't know, pre-K or whatever. And... Um, in this one moment that we were left alone, I had the very naughty idea of like feeding my dogs all their treats. I had been explicitly told to not feed the dogs their treats, but I didn't know why. And I couldn't imagine a consequence. I figured it was just some strict rule and I was like, hmm. And um, I want to point out that like this story involves a moment where toddlers essentially were left alone for more than 10 minutes so I'm as I revisited this incident I'm like where the fuck were the adults like I had at that time nannies and my mom had a maid and I think she was home and if she wasn't then why was nobody watching us like I have a three-year-old and never would he be having a play date and be left 15 minutes alone with said friend of his age this is just wild to me. But anyways, so I um, fed the animals and they went on to shit everywhere across the, like around the balcony. And it was a long ass balcony too, like a wrap around the balcony. It was apparently really gross. I didn't see it. But um, a couple of years ago, upon telling me the story, my mom was saying like almost with like, mm -hmm, point of pride, which... I'm going to get to like the whole fact that she even does things like mm -hmm, is so random because like that doesn't even belong to our identity and culture as black people. Like she's literally just mimicking crap from TV and it's just such an irritating little thing. Like I'm just realizing that this parent, this covert narcissist is such an actor. Like they should have gone into acting like you missed your calling for real. For real. I'm hearing you missed your calling, boo. So whatever that means. But, um, let's get a few squeaks in. Jesus. Okay, let's get serious. Um, can you tell I'm trying to, like, lighten my own energy? So, my mother was telling me this story a couple of years ago, and she's like, yeah, so I beat your ass, and I called your friend's mom, and told her what you guys did, and she got her ass beaten too. And I was like, is this what you want? Like round of applause for beating on three-year-old children, like three-year-olds. I'll be gracious and say the max I could have been was four, but I'm pretty damn sure I was not. 
So my mother goes on to spank me on the couch in the living room. Makes me pull down my panties as usual, which she made me do till I was 19, by the way. Fucking gross. And um, she uh, spanked me so hard, she broke the wooden spoon on my butt. And she went to get another one. We're going to take just this incident. Okay? Just that alone. I know so many people who, like, their parent slapped them once or told them to get out of the house or like ra like insulted them or something but like that alone is the kind of incident that would mark anybody like thinking about it gave me the shakes but what's really interesting is what narcissists do when you bring up facts and history that's embarrassing to them or that shows them in a light that they don't want everybody to know that they're like that, they'll minimize. They'll minimize what happened to you. That is the first unpleasant, traumatic, corporal punishment experience I had. But my mother has pulled my hair, she did it since I was 10, explicitly and purposely beat my head from ages like 10 to 16, actually even older. Because I remember when I was like older, she'd come to attack me and I would put my arms up and she'd be like, put your hands down so she can get your face in your head. It was really weird. Um... Probably this person also wanted to be a boxer. I don't know. So. <laughs> I'm hearing no Hamid Ali. Sorry. My brain likes to create puns. It, yeah. And um, <clears throat> this person has strangled me. This person has called me every name in the book. This person has financially abused me. But when talking about this. It has come back to me, and I can also sense it, that they're like, you were not really abused. And the following words, that I don't even know what real abuse is. This is my mother saying that. After I've asked her to explain where it came from in her to do things like shove dirty underwear in my mouth. Purposely putting the crotch part in my mouth when I was nine years old because I would forget my underwear in the shower after my bath in the evening. We were too poor to do laundry regularly. So I had to wash my underwear after school every day. And I did this for years just so I would have enough panties because we lived in an apartment building. So we had to pay the coins downstairs for a washer and dryer until eventually she kind of changed that system. When I was like at 13, we got a portable washer, which was a whole other interesting thing that led to apartments almost flooding completely at times. But anyways, um, the this thing, this, this specific thing, she did this to me for about like two weeks. It probably happened two or three times. That should wake me up. So first of all, she's waking me up. So she's basically going in our bathroom because we had two separate bathrooms at that time. Going in our bathroom, which me already at the age of nine, since the age of eight, have been, I've been fully maintaining my own bathroom. Cleaning the toilet, cleaning the tub, cleaning the sink, just doing it by myself. So I maintained that little space. Plus in the evenings, I'm made responsible of my sibling. Taking out their clothes as well, making sure they've eaten, uh, making sure they're showering. If they went poo, it was me going to wipe their butt. No, 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 no. My sibling is um, almost six years younger than me. So all evening, I'm taking care not only of myself, but another person. I want to also point out that at the age of nine, I've come to realize recently I was definitely depressed. They, like, there's no question of that. That's just a fact. The four years previous had been so turbulent and full of so much violence, not towards me yet, but you know, I'm telling you also that I have been in a household where I've been yelled at and spanked. So kind of like always ready to get into a lot of trouble. So just, I, I had a lot of anxiety by the time. Am I wearing this backwards? God help me. How much? No. Okay. So, um, 
yeah, so there were those two times that I'd get roused. And it's like where I started to like feel disgust towards my parent was like they would do like torture camp shit. Not just to me, but I'm only going to talk about myself. And in another incident, I remember like I was made to drink about two liters of water in under 10 minutes. I was 10 years old. My mother decided she was done with my bad breath. You don't drink enough water. I'm tired of repeating myself. You can't go into life with your mouth stinking like na na na. More than likely compared me to her ex-husband who was abusive to her and had halitosis. Yeah, and um, she forced me to like chug twice a really tall bottle of Gatorade. It was at least a 740 milliliter thing. And she wouldn't let me stop drinking. So I vomited all my dinner. Like there was so much water coming out of me that it came out through my nose. I remember I had carrots because I'd eaten carrots. We're always, we always ate baby carrots with dinner for vitamins. And like baby carrots were like coming, like chunks were coming out of my nose. And here's the best part. She didn't give a shit. She didn't try to help me while I was puking. And she made me clean it up. I'm not even going to go into the details of other things because I'm like, I think the word is triggered enough. I just want to put it out there. Do not let anybody invalidate you and do not gaslight yourself. Oh, my really? Oh, but mm, mm, mm. yeah, I've considered everything. Chronic pain, uh, mental illness, uh, past trauma, uh, anxiety. Uh, personality disorders and single mom aspect. I've considered all this. I've also added in the racial aspect, being biracial, being a biracial woman, um, being a queer biracial woman. Yo, I have like breathed through, overlooked, taken apart and reassembled all the intersectionality of like my family composition, my own little family unit that I grew in and this narcissistic model and how it's come to be so pervasive and jumping from generation to generation. And I'm sorry, the shit stops with me. Because the assault and the abuse, it also happened to her from both her parents. And they had it from their parents. And it's like, fucking stop. Can we stop hitting kids? Can you stop assaulting tiny human beings? Like we ourselves are terrified of assault. Assault from one human to another can lead to another human's death. And we instinctively know that. So what the hell do you think you're charging a tiny body with when you're coming at somebody who's fucking small with the energy of, I want to wreck you to teach you a lesson? Like, are you insane? And the answer is yes. Yes. You are insane. If you can put hands on a kid. You absolutely are. Now I caught myself at 18. Having some rageful reactions towards my sibling. My sibling used to rely on me. More even than our parents. Uh, more than uh, when I say parents at this time. It's uh, my mother and her then fiance. Who would become her, her wife. The alcoholic woman I spoke about in the previous video. Um... The, I didn't call her an alcoholic. I think I said she was a substance abuser. She, she, she would abuse anything she could. So it's not nice, but if she could abuse air, she would. Um, my sibling used to like come to me for so many things. And then like this substance abuser had like a really messed up past with certain things and would not feel comfortable with children being in her bed. I'm going to let you draw your own conclusions on that of why. It's not that they were something bad, but we're not going to talk about their stuff. So always wanting to sleep with me. And I'm like 18 years old. Like I'm trying to like blaze in my room. I'm trying to chill in my room, I'm trying to chat up some people. I'm trying to like do some things that my sibling cannot be around for. So I'm like, no. And also like, it was really hard because when I would let them sleep with me one night, they'd want to stay with me for like the next six nights. And I just couldn't. And I didn't find it fair that this level of emotional dependence was being put on me. And also, I was just in a household where, like, I was getting fuck all for, like, 
respect, recognition, and appreciation. And even for my sibling at times, when they would get annoyed, they would say like the most atrocious things to me. So around 18, I kind of was like, hey, I'm going to need my own space, my own bubble to do my own thing because I'm not vibing with this shit right now. And I did not feel like it was fair for me to be an unacknowledged parent anymore. So I started to take certain steps backwards um, progressively over many years, which was really hard for my younger sibling, but they thank me for that now. And, um, but there was one, there was an incident of me assaulting them apparently in their room where I thrashed them about their room. I don't remember this. And I have apologized profusely and I blacked out about it. Um, this is why I'm so honest and I'm like holding myself accountable as a person because that shit is in a lot of us. Like some people know, some people know so well that their rage would be so intense that they just never let it come out. Whilst me, since like I noticed that being as kind as I originally was got me taken advantage of, I became like really rageful and angry towards like the ages of 15, 16, 17. So at 18, 19, I noticed that and I was like, whoa, 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 no, we need to find some balance here and go back to like our peaceful core. And um, there was another incident of me wanting to wring my sibling's neck because they would not get out of my room. I was like, can I sleep with you? Can I sleep with you? And I was like, no, 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 no. I really need you to let me go to bed right now. Like I was exhausted. I was stressing about assignments the next day. Nah, nah, nah. And I literally brought my hands and I was just like, get out. You need to leave the room. You need to leave the room. You need to leave the room. So if there's anything I'm going to end this video on is... I feel like saying watch yourself because our shadows can creep out in the most unexpected of ways. And usually the thing that we fear the most, we end up attracting. Me for a long time, I feared being like my mother. When you fear being like your parent, oh, I fear I'll be like this. Oh, I fear I'll be like, you actually draw the thing in. You have to ask to be the best version of you or to take on the traits from your parents and also take on their good traits and ask to heal what they could not. If it's your place to transmute it. Make sure you are doing things that are really your responsibility. Make sure you're taking on what's really yours. And I'm hearing again, don't bullshit yourself. Me, since I know that there's all this trauma in me, I have a strict, I do not yell at my kids. I do not hit my kids. But also... I would rather die than lay hands on a tiny being that is depending on me to make them feel safe in the world. Like, why the hell am I going to come at you with Muhammad Ali energy? You're like something I created or that I manifested or that I wanted in my world. And even kids that are an accident or unwanted or whatever. The child's there. They didn't ask to be there. You have a goddamn responsibility. So before going and laying hands on other people, get your fucking shit right. And if you notice that in yourself, go get help. Go get help. Because usually hurt people hurt people, but that's because those people who have been hurt have been made to feel like nothing. So they feel like they have to do anything and everything to be heard and seen and respected and feared. But that's because they're fearful. If you want people to fear you, it's because you're afraid. You have to question, what are you afraid of? That's my video for today. Thank you for watching. Um, take care of yourselves. And I will speak to you very soon. I will be back with episode six in a couple of days. I have no idea what it's going to be about. So probably going to get more into theory. I think I'm going to like go back to talking about, um, we're going to define gaslighting. I'm going to give specific examples, examples of when I gaslit myself and so on and so forth. Mwah. Much love to you. Do your work if you're ready to, and just know that there's no way around it. So just have a Nike moment and do it. Follow me on social media. I am Divinely Danica on Facebook and Instagram. And I have a sister channel on which I share all my art, my nail art, and other things. And that is Noxie Ultimate. All links will be put down below. If you're looking for professional 
licensed advice from anybody, check out Dr. Ramani's channel on all things narcissism. Bye.